The Handley Page HP-52 Hamden was a British twin-engine medium bomber of the Royal Air Force. It was part of the trio of large twin-engine bombers procured for the RAF, joining the Armstrong Whitworth Whitley and the Victor's Wellington. This was in the uh, 1930s, just ahead of World War II, and would initially form the backbone of RAF Bomber Command. The Hamden was powered by um, Bristol Pegasus radial engines, uh, but a variant known as a Handley Page Hereford had an inline Napier daggers, and this was only used for uh, training purposes. The Hamden served in the early stages of the Second World War, bearing the brunt of the early bombing war over Europe, taking part in the first night raid on Berlin and the first thousand bomber raid on Cologne. When it became obsolete after a period of mainly operating at night, it was retired from RAF Bomber Command service in late 1942. By 1943, the rest of the uh, trio of aircraft were being superseded by the larger heavy, uh, heavy bombers, such as the Avro Lancaster, the Handley Page Halifax, and the Short Sterling. The Hamden Mark I had a pilot, navigator, bomb aimer, a radio operator stroke dorsal gunner, and a rear gunner, so four crew in total. Conceived as a fast manoeuvrable fighting bomber, the Handen had a fixed forward firing 303 machine gun in the upper part of the fuselage nose. Um, to avoid weight penalties of power turrets, the, the Hamden had a curved Persex nose fitted with a manual 303 Vickers K machine gun and a 303 Vickers K installation in the rear upper and lower positions. The layout was similar to the all guns forward cockpits uh, introduced about the same time in Luftwaffe medium bombers, notably the Doña Dio 17 during the Norwegian. But during the Norwegian campaign, these guns proved to be thoroughly inadequate for self-defence in daylight. And the single guns were replaced by um, Vickers, uh, twin Vickers K guns, a process led by Air Vice Marshal uh, Harris um, of No. 5 Group of the RAF in 1914. The Hamden's flying qualities was quickly were typically described as being favourable. Moyes described it as being an extraordinary mobile on the controls. Pilots were provided with a high level of external visibility, assisting the execution of steep turns and other manoeuvres. The control layout required some familiarisation, as elements such as hydraulic controls were unobtrusive and unintuitive. Upon introduction, the Hamden exhibited greater speeds and initial climb rates than any of its companions temporaries while retaining hand favorable handling qualities. The slim and compact fuselage of the Hamden was quite cramped, maybe very cramped being a better description, being wide enough only for a single person. The navigator stroke bomb aimer sat behind the pilot and access in the co uh, cockpit required folding the seats. Once in place, the crew had almost no room to move except the navigator stroke bomb aimer who could access the nose by going under the pilot and were typically uncomfortable during long missions. Air crews refer to the Hamden by its varied nicknames due to this, such as the flying suitcase, pan handle and the flying tadpole. Whitford John Mike Lewis described the Hamden as a beautiful aeroplane to fly, terrible to fly in. Cramped, no heat, no facilities where you could relieve yourself. You got in there and you were stuck there. The aeroplane was like a fighter. It was only three foot wide on the outside of the fuselage and the pilot was a very busy person. There were 111 items to take care of because of the on the original aircraft. He had not only to find the instruments, the engines and all that, but he also had the bomb switches to hold the bombs. This was later changed. So this is very much a late 1930s classic that formed had a key role it also served with uh, coastal command and was eventually retired from there uh, by the end of 1943 so this is for the saturday night crash uh, group build i'll be building the valon kit and the next part is the unboxing of that kit So this is the unboxing video for the uh, Handley Page Hamden Mark II B by Valon. Now the guys who know this channel follow me know this is not my typical kind of kit. I, I did a run last year for Pacific Theatre, and this is for the Saturday Night Crash um, um, 
YouTube community and Facebook group for their Bomber Command group build. And I will be building this with some elements from the uh, RAF uh, Bomber Command resupply set, probably the fuel tank in one vehicle. Um, I will do a separate unboxing video for this. So we're just going to look specifically at this kit. Um, so, nice top opening box. I've already taken it out of the plastic and had a little bit of a look, so this is not complete to surprise. This was ordered from Hannans, and a key lesson for me is don't go on their website, don't order stuff when you're tired, because I managed to uh, inadvertently order two kits instead of one. Uh, yeah, and I wasn't switched on enough about it, but anyway. <coughs> Both are going to be built in this uh, build series. So, um, semi-limited run kit. Um, that very much uh, is seen as a successor to the old, uh, very old FX Hanley Page Hamden. So we'll st take a start by looking at the sprues. And you've got here clear sprue photo etch with decals and resin plus the uh, two sprues of grey plastic and we'll take a look at these first. So starting off with low wings and the fuselage halves that do quite a good job of capturing the uh, core features and feel of this uh, rather classic aircraft. Um, Quite fine panel lines and rivet detail, which is nice to see. Fear about rivet detail like that is it can be lost with the filling and sanding. Um, the ridge along this fuselage, as long as that, along the rear fuselage, as long as that glues together quite well, you may not obliterate too much. And you've got the bomb bays doors there, which run on a fair length of the lower fuselage. So you only have to really worry about it at these ends. So that's quite relatively forgiving. Your main visible area, I think, is going to be around here and here and there. So a little bit of care being taken and think about the filling method you use. Um, bit of sidewall detail for the pilot's area and for the bomb aimers. The, I think these look like ejection pin marks um, at the gunner stations. So, that's useful. Pilot's quite pronounced. Something may be needed to be added here and here, but... Bombay doors are moulded shut with a representative Bombay there. It's something I think with a bit of detail work and probably with a um, resin... Uh, conversion set you may be able to do something with so um, slightly disappointing that the uh, flaps and slats are molded in close position but I don't think it's an inordinate amount of surgery if you really want to do these drooped but look at your reference photos I not sure if when it was parked up the Hamden's uh, flaps uh, dropped with the release of hydraulic pressure if they were hydraulically actuated. Um, things like that are worth looking out for on your reference picks, uh, particularly if you're modelling an aircraft with no uh, crew figures. Do look at their parked up conditions um, think about what the aircraft is in its uh, operational cycle. Uh, some cockpit detail here, that's the pilot's uh, cabin floor, pilot's yoke, um, the Vickers K guns are reasonably well uh, detailed, um, single piece moulding for the tail wheel, uh, reading reviews of this kit, the undercarriage is a fairly complex affair, quite nice pilot seat and uh, engine exhaust. Uh, some parts you may not be using for this particular kit. 
So going over to the other sprue. So the wing top halves, the props, engine walls, uh, the wheels split into two halves. This uh, particular kit is with the um, the right cyclone engine, so won't be using these particular engines on it. Um, the wheels aren't weighted. Again, look at reference picks to see how much they would have been weighted by. Um, some detail, it does appear on the inside of the undercarriage doors. Quite muted detail, but it's still definitely there. So depending on how you display this model, that may well make it present scene, but it'll be quite difficult to see nonetheless. The mold engine mouldings as they are are quite good. Um, a lot of fine uh, recess panel lines. Um, the props look okay, no flash. Nothing really on this brew either to give me any great deal of concern. Uh, of course, as with any model, the proof of the pulling will be in the eating. So, let's take a look at the um, the resin that's in the sealed bag, so I'll have to unseal this. And we have the uh, right cyclone engines, which I think are actually quite a pleasing little affair here I'm not sure how well this is focusing in um, quite a lot of detail very nice detail actually molded in small poor gate so this shouldn't present too much of a problem uh, and I think you'll see a reasonable amount of engine behind a quite open cowling so these are worth putting some effort into to do a reasonable job of and look at your color refs I believe that would probably be like a brass color uh, with the against the uh, black and uh, gunmetal tones of the engine other parts of the moldings are the um, engine cowlings for the right engines. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether these are horizontally or vertically split. I'm hoping they are horizontally split, which tends to lend itself more towards the... Uh, um, with the cowls being removed um, and less trouble with, with panel lines, but I'm not sure about this. Um, maybe an idea when taking these off the mould gate off the uh, block is to first separate them that way before cutting across there. Moulding quality looks pretty good. Um, they've actually moulded additional parts inside so you have to be quite ginger with removing these. I can't see any uh, bubbles or causes for concern with these uh, resin components that actually looks quite nice but anything if you've got a little bit of experience filling in any marks and blemishes I can't see that presenting particular problems So, the decals. Now, oh, sorry. <laughs> and here's me now, being a cack handed bugger, struggling with what's supposed to be. There we go. So decals and a bit of photo etch. Okay, small decal sheet. 
not too experienced with Valon kits. I don't know what the quality of these is. They seem to be in quite good register. Um, I've not seen any mentions of these having a tendency to disintegrate or anything. Uh, do I have a dislike? I think absence of stencils. Okay, not, not so heavily common on World War II aircraft, but this seems a little bit sparse. And not particularly of note is the aircraft's um, ID letters. They've given two aircraft serials, um, but no letters. And I think a bit of research there is going to be necessary or... And I'm thinking possibly aftermarket decals on these. These, as they stand, don't, in my mind, present any great issues. Um, thin carrier film. And with a bit of work care, Microset and Microsol, they should settle quite well. Um, but the proof of the pudding is always eat was in the eating. I like, again, that they've included the aircraft type and mark. So if you're doing it on a display stand, you've got statement of what the aircraft is on there a lot of decal sets don't include that i do like it's a small thing but i like that inclusion um but part of me is still thinking aftermarket decals because of the absence of the um id letters the uh letter before and the two letters after the fuselage roundels that's a little bit of um that should be added to, to this, uh, is missing from this and needs to be added. The photo etch. Uh, seat belts for the crew, some cockpit details, instrument panel, um, the uh, alternative uh, aerials and foot pedals. Um, I can't see again these presenting any major issues. Also, external pitot tube there, uh, external aerial there. Uh, take your time with this. It doesn't look like there's any significant amount of bending. Um, and it's, the seat belts do look quite nice. So they'll add something to the interior but nothing too dramatic i know there's additional um aftermarket um, photo etch sets available for this kit and that might be worth investing in if you want to add something more to it as it stands this is quite acceptable but i do think the model as we will see with the instructions yeah you could look at a little bit more adding a little bit more detail particularly if you want to do with this with the bombay open but that's going to require surgery in its own right um, and i do believe that there is a uh, there is after there are aftermarket sets available for these specific kits giving you a more detailed hamden cockpit and a more detailed hamden uh, bombay so let's take a look at the glazing. Point out gently. Right. I can't see anything significant with this. Seems a little bit on the thick side. Um, I have read remarks that there are some fit issues with this. Um, the pilot's glazing. If you want to do the pilot's canopy slid open as it appears in so many images you are certainly going to have to do a little bit of surgery to separate out uh, this portion from the front half but thankfully because the two side panels are separate it'll actually make doing um, the canopy slid back relatively easy that you'll be able to put that over the upper part of the fuselage and fit the two side pieces in uh, next to it so that's a nice touch but you're going to have to be quite ginger in separating along the indicated area yes they are a little bit thick but again you don't want things being too fragile because it'll just break not too happy that the um 
mid upper gunner's position is in the closed format um, because that is so often seen open. Uh, again, if you want to have that uh, displayed like that, you are going to have to do some careful surgery. Now, that's the position there. No, I think that's the one there. It's that one. And you're going to have to do a bit of surgery to open up the uh, mid upper gunner's uh, position. Um, I don't know if it'll be worth the effort. Is there a vacuum form alternative out there? I don't know. Um, there's no stepping on this. So having that slid back, I could see presenting issues, shall we say. Um, the nose is looks pretty adequate. Again, there are... Um, masking sets available for this but it feels pronounced enough that you could mask this reasonably well yeah feeling the edge with using the um, a cocktail stick to burnish it in you should be able to do the masking reasonably well on this model uh, without too much of a nightmare it's nowhere near as bad as many world war ii subjects certainly nowhere near as bad if you want to build something like a Heinkel 111 or some of the uh, other German aircraft with their greenhouse glazing. So this is quite, as World War II bombers go, this seems relatively easy to deal with. But neither would I say that a um, a masking set would go necessarily go up, be unappreciated for this. And again, they are out there and available, I believe, through Hannans. Cost about five pounds, so uh, nice bomb aimers panel there. They, I'd say, the nose worth doing research on just to busy it up a little bit. As always, I go into cack handed mode when putting away anything like this. I'll put that back a little bit later. Let's take a look at our instructions from our friends at Valon. Oh, the joys of being fingers and thumbs sometimes. So, a little bit of background history. Um, and you can really open up the decals you've got here. Your two colour schemes. A little bit frustrated that it doesn't say which squadron they're for. Uh, they give you the aircraft serial ranges, but it'd be just nice which squadron, where was it based, something like that would be appreciated. Very similar colour callouts for both aircraft, um, except one happens to have grey on the engines. Okay. Um, otherwise, these camo schemes are largely the same. As I said, the letters that annoy me that are missing would go for those of you looking at this this way up will be the letters that go here and here and I think that uh missing is uh, something of an error. And I mentioned about the canopy, this part here is often displayed folded back and over. And looking at the width of that, that's going to be difficult to do unless you buy a conversion set. Um, so, colour callouts, nice to see a range of colours. You've got them in Humbrol, Agma, Model Master, Gun Sanyo, and the FS colour callouts. Again, go online to get your association with um, Tamiya or Vallejo if you use those. Um, but it's a nice, reasonably comprehensive colour callout, which is good. So let's take a look at the instructions.
So, call out there here for the parts indicating what you're not using. Mostly noted engine components. So you're not using these plastic cows, you're not using their engines and different call outs there on the weapons but I don't see so why have they crossed out all the Vickers machine guns that I have not entirely sure but anyway we'll have to look at that so construction as always starts with the engines um well, it starts with the uh, cockpit. So, moderately busy uh, pilot's office with the access behind uh, to the rest of the aircraft. A bit of detail on, uh, I believe, for radio operator's position. You're going to have to call out some handmade components. Um, first one that gets mentioned really is a block to accommodate the undercarriage and I've seen people reviewing that and mentioning it that seems a little bit often I don't see that as being a major issue but just bear in mind to locate the tail wheel you do need to put an internal block of uh, plastic card sprue evergreen strips something like that uh, engine detail there and it does look they that they are split uh, horizontally so uh, that's not too bad if you want to do this uh, engine displayed open I think thinning down resin to have these cowlings off may be a bit more of a challenge more so than if you were using plastic but for this version that's fair enough bit of a shame it's just a single bank radial but anyway Detail for the other positions. Now, this is where it does seem a little bit sparse. Um, that you've got your radio operator set um, there. Gunners uh, seats with their lap belts. Reasonable cockpit. Bomb aimers position. There's a lot more going on in there. And I think in here you're going to need to dress that up a little bit now there's plenty of there's a few a couple of surviving hamdens one i believe just down the road 40 50 miles away cosford uh which is being restored and there's images of that uh, i think the the nose position is definitely worth dressing up you're going to see quite a lot in there so to add something for the bomb aimers position and i believe there are as i said photo edge sets available for this area uh, Bombay closed off with the floor put into there. No internal structural detail, so you may have to look at the line, the rivet lines on the fuselage to identify where to put in your um, stringers and your uh, fuselage uh, formers. So a little bit of extra work required there. Um, you can see quite well into this aircraft so it may well be worth doing now the undercarriage does appear to locate on this la fairly large internal structure that you have to build this panel that you put in um, that again may require a little bit of research on that and I have read in some of the build reviews that that can create issues Now, the uh, wings are a butt joint, but you do seem to have a reasonable ridge there to help you locate it. Um, undercarriage doors, aft position, and some of the uh, remaining photo edge pieces. Nice addition is reference photos. As we said, we do you do you should be dressing this up a little bit. There do seem to be have images showing the bomb aimer's position with a bl plotting table across the front of it. Again, look that up, um, and it's well worth going online just to build up your uh, 
image library and finally a line drawing as well um, so twin rigging to do so something you will need to take a little bit of extra time over and I've noticed that the uh, connection lines there do cause the main rigging wire to pull in. So a little bit more aerial rigging than you may have with some other aircraft. But nothing too extraordinary going on with this. Now, this seems, it's a Valum kit. So this isn't going to be a shake or bake by any stretch of the imagination. Um, read reviews for this. See if you can find uh, build videos. As I understand it, it's not going to be the most forgiving of projects. Uh, but considering the age of the old Airfix kit, uh, it's probably the best Handley Page Hamden out there. Though... I'm not seeing anything else being released, but still a significant and worthwhile aircraft to do. Main argument I would say is I think it needs aftermarket decals um, for the unit ID. People may dispute that, and if I'm proven wrong, I'm proven wrong. Also notice no kind of uh, bomb tally, name, artwork. It seems sparse. It does seem a little bit sparse. So that's the Handley Page Hamden Mark II from Valum for the uh, Saturday Night Crash Bomber Command Group build. And my goal will be to build one of these aircraft being uh, prepped, fueled up, and then the second build will maybe be the same aircraft, uh, either coming back or having arrived at them, not sure, not entirely sure what condition, so before and after build. So I suppose at this stage I better do a bit of an addendum to this unboxing. And another one of the dangers of going on to Hannon's late at night. I not only bought two of the kits, but I also bought two of the Mark II Bs with the right Cyclone engine. They only built two of those, and I bought two blooming kits of it, and they didn't enter service. So that's what all these resin bits are about. So I'm recording this as I'm already well underway with the build, and um, I'm not going to end up using the resin engine. You've got all the bits in there, apart from the forward uh, machine gun and the forward uh, Vickers K gun, which seem to be missing. But you've got all the bits to build the other versions, so I'm going to have a whole load of resin uh, bits left over. So yes, and that explains why there are no unit markings, but what I will be doing there is uh, producing unit marking uh, stencils um, for all that and uh, work out the lettering as I've done in the past, get something printed up to suitable size and font, stick it onto the kabuki tape, cut it out and then airbrush in the uh, lettering, hopefully. Hopefully, without making too much of a bulls up of it. But that explains the resin engines. That explains the absence of the um, in-service unit decals. I may well be doing number 43 squadron. And uh, if I can, I'll try and trace the history of the aircraft I've done. If not, well, it'll hopefully just be a 43 squadron Hamden. That's what the rough idea is. So that's a little bit of an addendum. Uh to my unboxing and my previous wobbling.